how did a kid who sold his own blood for money become the reason why we pay $5 for a cup of coffee? This is the story of Starbucks and how Howard Schultz took the company from a local coffee chain to a global empire. Schultz grew up in a public housing project where he experienced a defining moment in his life. When he was seven years old, his father had a severe work injury that left him unemployed and without health insurance. His father was laying on the couch with a cast from his hip to his ankle, and Howard's father was an army veteran and a truck driver with no workman's compensation, no severance, and no health insurance. This made Schultz realize the importance of opportunity and how it easily could be taken away from someone. In 2017, he told the graduates of Arizona State University how he saw the lowest moments of his parents' lives. When I was seven years old, I had a defining moment in my life, Schultz said. I saw the fracturing of the American dream, and I saw my parents go through hopelessness and despair. And those scars, that shame, that still remains with me to this day. Schultz's mom wanted him to go to college so he could have a better life, but she couldn't afford to send him to school. So Schultz attended Northern Michigan University on a football scholarship, but when classes started, he made the decision not to play football. Instead, he worked plenty of odd jobs while he was in school to support himself. He had worked as a bartender, and at one point in his life, Schultz sold his blood for money. After he graduated from college, he was employed at a ski lodge somewhere in Michigan after which he worked in sales at Xerox and later found himself employed in the houseware business called Hammerplast. When Schultz became a general manager at a Swedish drip coffee maker manufacturer, his fate was sealed. He was bound to fall in love with coffee. As a manager, he had to go on business trips to see how current and potential clients were doing their businesses. As this was happening, Starbucks was only just a local coffee shop in Seattle, nothing was special about it. But the first time Schultz stepped into Starbucks, he fell in love with how passionate the owners were. But what struck Schultz the most is the amazing smell of fresh coffee that engulfs you when you step into the store. And he knew then that he wanted to work at Starbucks. He later had his wish realized when he became the marketing director of Starbucks in 1982. A year later, he was exposed to coffee in Italy on a buying trip to Milan. Howard was convinced that Starbucks would be so much more than it already was. And I was uh, captured emotionally uh, by the Italian coffee bar, the sense of community, the third place between home and work, and I raced back to America thinking, this is what I'd like to try and do and transform the Italian coffee experience uh, into the American society. Excited to share his vision, he persuaded Jerry Baldwin and Gordon Bowker, the original founders of Starbucks, to offer traditional espresso drinks. At that time, they were only selling whole bean coffee, leaf teas, and spices. Howard Schultz successfully pitched the cafe concept to the founders and both were interested. However, they were reluctant to invest due to the expensive cost of espresso machines. They also took into account the expense of repair and maintenance. And most importantly, they weren't sure how Americans would react to these beverages because they lacked familiarity. So even though they were intrigued, they were not convinced. Their response frustrated Schultz to the point where he resigned from Starbucks to start his own company to follow his vision. A few years later in 1985, he opened a coffee shop. The business required $400,000 to have it up and running. Mr. Schultz traveled to over 500 espresso bars in Milan and with him assuming the majority of the risk associated with bringing espresso to the United States, introduced it to the American market. Starbucks invested $150,000 into Howard's business, making Baldwin earn a place on its board. Meanwhile, Boker offered unofficial monetary assistance. He received another $100,000 investment from Ron Margolis, a local doctor. In total, Howard approached 242 investors, which led to 217 rejections. If I came to you in 1987 and I said to you, I want to build a company with Italian saying words that no one could pronounce for three dollars a cup of coffee, would you invest? Absolutely not. Okay. After introducing his business model to hundreds of investors, he was finally able to open the store in 1986. He named the store Il Giornale, which was inspired by the Milanese newspaper. 
he was selling coffee, ice cream, and only had a few seats available, but in the background, opera music was played for the dine-in guests. Two years after the official launch, Starbucks decided to put its attention more on Pete's coffee and tea, so the original management sold it for $3.8 million to Schultz and Il Giornale. I was thrilled. And the purchase price was $3.8 million for six stores. Il Giornale was rebranded by Schultz under the Starbucks moniker, and its distribution was increased throughout the United States. Customers and rivals reacted differently to this kind of marketing campaign. While some owners thanked Starbucks for introducing people to coffee, the company's relationships with independent coffeehouse businesses was strained. Schultz opposed franchising and made it a point to ensure that Starbucks retained control of each domestic location. It is widely believed that Schultz brought the second wave of coffee culture to the United States, particularly in Seattle, by presenting Starbucks as a social center. Starbucks's first public offering and the trading of company common shares under the stock symbol SBUX took place on June 26, 1992. The company's $271 million IPO proceeds went towards increasing its size. In order to aid the company's international expansion, Schultz resigned as CEO of Starbucks on June 1st, 2000. Oren Smith, who had previously served as Schultz's top financial officer in the 1990s, took over as his replacement. Schultz organized the first Starbucks store opening in China in January 1999, but it took him until the following year to build up a clientele for coffee in the area. In the late 2000s and the early 2010s, Schultz gave the company the order to schedule one to two Starbucks store openings per day in mainland China. Meanwhile, back in the company's home market of the United States, various coffee wars with McDonald's and Dunkin' Donuts reduced Starbucks' market share, and the stock price dropped by 75% from 2006, even while overall revenue was increasing. It was mostly based on new store openings creating unsustainable or inorganic growth. In the midst of the 2008 financial crisis, on January 7, 2008, Schultz rejoined Starbucks as CEO after an eight-year absence. He succeeded Smith's replacement, Jim Donald, who took over in 2005. In March 2009, he and the board approved a $100 million settlement in back tips in a barista-led class action lawsuit in California. He oversaw the mass firing of executives, the closure of hundreds of stores, and the temporary closure of all U.S. locations in order to retrain staff members in espresso making. Schultz also intensified and enforced the company's fair trade policies. He increased their yearly fair trade coffee spending by twofold during the next two years, reaching an estimated 40 million pounds. The first chief technology officer of the coffee shop was hired thanks to Schultz's arrangement. Schultz was being paid a total of $9.7 million at the time, which included a $1.2 million base salary and $7.8 million in stock options. In addition to being on the board of Starbucks, Schultz was a founder and early investor in Jamba Juice in 2011 and served until 2014 on the board of payment processing firm Square Incorporated. In December of 2016, Schultz again relinquished his role as CEO to become executive chairman. Schultz led a roughly $100 billion increase in the company's market capitalization from 2008 to 2017. Starbucks expanded from 11 coffee shops in Seattle to 28,000 locations in 77 countries between the 1980s and the time he retired. After 37 years of active management at Starbucks, Schultz announced his retirement on June 4th, 2018. Then later in June of 2018, Myron Ullman took over as chairman after Kevin Johnson, the company's president and chief operating officer for the preceding two years, succeeded Schultz as CEO. Johnson would leave the office in March of 2022, and Schultz would take over as CEO in an interim capacity. It was clear from the beginning that Howard set out to create a different sort of firm from the ground up, one that promotes business excellence via a compassionate culture. In those early years, Howard developed two groundbreaking initiatives based on the core conviction that an organization can only succeed by sharing success with its employees and the community it serves. 
First, and among the first in the retail sector, Starbucks provided full and part-time employees who qualified with health care. Second, Starbucks provided partners, aka workers, with Beanstalk, which was a sort of equity in the business. Under Howard's leadership, with the addition of its groundbreaking Starbucks Reserve Roastery locations, community stores, military family stores, and a worldwide agronomy hub at Hacienda Alsacia, Starbucks increased its store count from 15,000 to over 30,000 during the course of the decade. Through the Starbucks College Achievement Plan, a groundbreaking program that offers partners a tuition-free college education online, he opened up new educational options. He also pledged to hire tens of thousands of military veterans, their spouses, opportunity youngsters, and refugees. Over the years, there was speculation that Howard Schultz would be a potential Democratic candidate. At the beginning of the 2012 presidential campaign in the United States, Schultz's name was mentioned as a possible Democratic candidate. After he gave Starbucks workers in Washington the order to write Come Together on All Cups to promote bipartisanship in the federal government on December 26th, press speculation increased. However, Schultz batted down these reports a few days later and declared that he was not running for office. He then went on to publicly deny these reports. Press rumors about Schultz's potential presidential run surfaced again in late September and early August of 2015. Maureen Dowd of the New York Times reported on August 1st that friends of America's Lord of Latte, Howard Schultz, have been pressing him to join the Democratic primary. Over the following few days, media outlets started to wonder if Schultz was going to make a formal announcement. In an op-ed in the New York Times on August 6, 2015, Schultz refuted Fortune's claim that he would make a worthy party backup to Hillary Clinton, saying, Despite the urging of others, I have no intention of entering the presidential race. I'm not done serving Starbucks. Schultz was referred to as the liberal Donald Trump by newspapers like The Atlantic because of his similar business history and fortune. After Schultz left Starbucks in 2018, political pundits opined about whether he would run for president of the United States in 2020. There was also support from a draft movement called Ready for Schultz. At the beginning of 2019, The New Republic published an article titled Run Howard Run, encouraging him to enter the race. He hired political consultants Steve Schmidt and Bill Burton to evaluate his candidacy. In an interview with 60 Minutes on January 27, 2019, he said that he was considering running for president as an independent and as a centrist. He reportedly planned to spend between $300 million and $500 million on the 2020 race. Democrats vigorously opposed Schultz's proposed independent candidacy, claiming that it would assist President Trump win re-election by splitting the vote of those who opposed him. According to political scientist Larry Sabato, Schultz's candidacy will probably help Trump. According to a CNN analysis, running on a platform of deficit reduction could wind up driving as many Republican moderates away from Trump as liberals or independents away from the Democratic nominee. No one wants to see Donald Trump removed from office more than me, Schultz said, in response to claims that his candidacy would help Trump. His first town hall in Seattle received a mixed response from protesters holding up Grande Ego and Venti Mistake banners, while his actual speech was well received. Schultz was frequently questioned about whether he might consider liquidating all of his Starbucks stock holdings if he were to win the presidency. In response, he said, there are many ways to do this, set up a blind trust, do a lot of things to remove any conflict of interest, but if elected, he had pledged to make all of his tax records public. Later in February, Schultz said he would withdraw from the race if the Democrats chose a centrist Democrat. In May of 2019, Schultz put off making a decision, and by September 6th, he had officially decided against running for president. He said it wasn't the best way to serve our country at this time, and his decision was prompted by the eventual rise of centrist candidate Joe Biden to the position of presumptive nominee due to their similar political philosophies. But on September 14th of 2020, Schultz declared his support for Biden and urged voters to do so for the future of our republic.
Whether you agree with Schultz's political views or not, you can't deny that he has made major contributions not only to the coffee industry, but also to American society and culture. Schultz is a perfect example of the American dream, starting out from humble beginnings and eventually becoming one of the richest men in America. For his dedication, his leadership, and his work to build up communities, Howard has received recognition for producing record financial returns for the business while spearheading an initiative to promote job creation in the US, Howard was awarded Fortune's 2011 Business Person of the Year. He's also received other awards such as the Atlantic Council Distinguished Business Leadership Award, Northwestern University's Kellogg School of Management's Distinguished Leadership Award, and many others. Additionally, he was listed among the Time 200 list of the world's most influential individuals, published by Time Magazine. And he is also the best-selling author of Pour Your Heart Into It, Onward, How Starbucks Fought for Its Life Without Losing Its Soul, From the Ground Up, A Journey to Reimagine the Promise of America, For a Love of Country, What Our Veterans Can Teach Us About Citizenship, Heroism and Sacrifice, and Pour Your Heart Into It. Schultz has a net worth of $1.5 billion and is ranked 311th on the Forbes 400 list at the moment. He is renowned for his constant ambition to grow his company and his capabilities, penetrate new markets, and his willingness to offer security and comfort to his staff. He is also regarded internationally as a trendsetter both in coffee retail and business management. The Schultz Family Foundation and Emmys Project, LLC, two organizations devoted to fostering better opportunity that is available to everyone, were founded by Howard and his wife Sherry. The foundation and the Emmys Project are concentrated on developing and investing in entrepreneurial, cross-sector solutions designed to build more equitable systems, foster our common bonds, strengthen our democracy, and create life-changing opportunities for people and communities who have traditionally been at the margin of our country's promise, especially young adults and post 9-11 veterans. Howard Schultz came from a college student who worked multiple jobs to help pay for school to one of the most influential people on the planet. Schultz is a perfect example of what can be accomplished through dedication and hard work. He is an influential voice in business and society and has used his platform to promote opportunities for all. His story is an inspiration to anyone who has ever faced adversity or thought that their dreams were out of reach. But what do you think of Howard Schultz's story? Do you think he deserves the success he has today? Let us know in the comments. And if this video inspired you to take action in your own life, then check out our video about the founder of WhatsApp. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you never miss a video. And as always, thanks for watching.